Fries, we love them. We eat them, a lot of them. Americans eat 4.5 billion pounds of fries each year. That's a lot of potatoes. But have you ever wondered how they're made? And how do they taste the same at every fast food place? Well, there's a secret behind it. It's pretty wild and it's all science. This is how French fries are really made. The harvest. Our story kicks off with the harvest. When the potatoes are just right, Huge machines roll through the fields, gently digging up the spuds and loading them onto trucks. These aren't your average pickup trucks, though. They're equipped with special conveyor belts to make unloading a breeze. In colder climates, the trucks are closed in to protect the precious cargo from freezing. After all, a frozen potato won't make for a very good French fry. As the trucks arrive at the processing plant, they cross over a scale. This isn't just for show. It's how the farmers get paid. Every potato is accounted for, ensuring fair compensation for their hard work, but not every potato makes the cut. Samples are taken from each load to check for quality and color. If a batch doesn't meet the strict standards, it might be turned away. Only the best spuds get to continue on this journey to French fry fame. The cleaning process. Now that our potatoes have made it to the plant, it's time for them to get cleaned up. First stop, the water rock remover. This clever device uses water to separate any sneaky stones that might have hitched a ride with our potatoes. Then it's on to another rock remover, just to be sure we've caught all the pebbles. Next, our potatoes get a good wash. Then they're sorted by size and length. In the French fry world, size does matter, but we're not done yet. The potatoes then head into high pressure steam peelers. These machines use hot steam to loosen the skins, making them easier to remove. After the steam treatment, the potatoes roll through a series of long, round brushes. These brushes gently scrub away the loosened peels. But don't worry, nothing goes to waste here. The removed peels are collected and used for cattle feed. Shaping our fries. Now after the potatoes are clean, it's time for a little makeover. This is where they start to look more like the fries we know. First up is the trimming process. Any black spots, bruises, or bits that didn't get peeled are carefully removed. Potatoes that have been sunburned or windburned, or those with serious defects, don't make it past this point. After trimming, the potatoes take a dip in large water tanks. This isn't just a final rinse, it's preparation for the big moment. Cutting. There are two types of cutters, one for straight cut fries and one for crinkle cut. For straight cut fries, the potatoes are pumped through a water gun and then through a cross hatch of knives. This gives them that perfect square shape but what about the bits that are too small or oddly shaped? Don't worry, they don't go to waste. These slivers and nubbins are used to make other tasty potato products like hash browns. The blanching process. Now, you might think we're ready to fry, but no, there's an important step between cutting and frying that helps give French fries their signature taste and texture. It's called blanching and it's kind of like a hot tub party for our potato strips. After cutting, the fries are sent to large cylindrical tanks called blanchers. These tanks are filled with water heated to about 82 degrees Celsius. The fries take a dip in this hot water for several minutes. The exact time can vary depending on the time of year and the condition of the potatoes. But why go through all this trouble? Well, blanching does a few important things. One, it destroys enzyme activity in the potatoes. This helps prevent them from turning brown or developing off flavors. Two, it removes excess sugars from the surface of the fries. You see, as potatoes are stored, their starch slowly turns into sugar. By removing this excess sugar, blanching helps make sure that our fries will have a consistent color and texture, no matter when the potatoes were harvested. Three, it starts the cooking process, softening the potatoes just a bit. After their hot bath, 
The fries are quickly cooled and dried. This prepares them for the next step, par frying. The frying process. This is where our potato strips truly become French fries. But did you know there are actually two frying stages in the commercial production of frozen French fries? After blanching and drying, our potato strips are ready for their first oil bath. This stage is called pre-frying and it's crucial for creating that perfect French fry texture. The fries are dropped into hot oil, usually around 180 to 190 degrees Celsius. They sizzle away for 30 seconds to five minutes, depending on factors like potato type and cut size. This pre-frying forms a thin gelatinized layer of starch on the surface, which helps limit oil absorption later on. Once they're done, the par-fried strips take a ride on a vibrating conveyor belt. This shakes off excess oil, ensuring our fries will be crispy, not greasy. Freezing and packaging. But why freeze the fries? Why not just send them straight to the restaurant? Well, freezing is actually an important step in making sure you get the best possible fries every time. After frying, the fries are sent to a freezer set at negative 39 degrees Celsius. They stay here for about 20 minutes. This quick freezing process helps lock in the flavor and texture. Once they're properly frozen, it's time for packaging. This process is almost entirely automated. A machine weighs out specific amounts of fries, usually in one kilogram or 1.5 kilogram batches, and drops them into poly bags. Then another machine folds the bag, seals it, and cuts it from the roll. These bags of frozen fries are then packed into cardboard boxes and stored in refrigerated rooms at minus 23 degrees Celsius. From here, they're ready to be shipped out to restaurants and stores all over the world. The final steps. So we followed our potatoes from the field to the freezer, but how do they get from that frozen state to the hot, crispy fries on your plate? Well, it's pretty simple unless you've never made fries. When a restaurant or fast food joint needs fries, they take them out of the freezer and give them their final fry. This is usually done in oil heated to about 180 to 190 degrees Celsius. This final frying thaws the fries completely. It cooks them all the way through, making sure they're hot and fluffy on the inside. And it crisps up the outside, giving them a golden brown color and a satisfying crunch. The frying time can vary, but it's usually around two to three minutes. And once they're done, the fries are quickly salted and served up hot and fresh. That's how a potato in a field turns into golden, crispy fries on your plate. The French fries industry combines age-old farming techniques with cutting-edge food science. And it's an industry that's constantly innovating, always looking for ways to make fries that are tastier, crispier, and more consistent. If you enjoyed this deep dive into how fries are made, why not give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. You'll be the first to know when we drop our next video. What's your favorite way to eat French fries? Classic with ketchup, loaded with cheese and bacon? Drop your answer in the comments below. Thanks for watching and remember, whether you call them French fries, chips or frites, there's a whole lot of science in every bite.